From an airport that operates thousands of feet below sea level to one of the saltiest places on Earth, here's some amazing sights that the ocean could look down on. Danakil Depression. Now, annually, on average, Africa's Danakil Depression is the most scorching hot place on the entire planet. The Triangular Depression is 124 by 31 miles in size and lies at the junction of three massive tectonic plates whose history is complex enough that a 10-minute long video could probably be made about its history alone. Of course, it's likely only geologists would really be into that sort of thing, so we'll spare you all those details. Besides, I'm no geologist, so that video would also totally blow. One of the lowest places on Earth, it lies 100 meters or more below sea level. Its landscape is like that of another world, so much so that some of its environments, like the Dalal Sulphur Springs, are being studied to explore how life might come into existence on distant planets. Active volcanoes dot the terrain, like Mount Alayu to the south and Erta Ale, which features a crater lake full of bubbling lava straight from the Earth's mantle. Well, this is depressing. Bar Yehuda Airfield. The Dead Sea's airport opened in 1963 west of the Dead Sea in the southern Judean desert. It's by no means a big commercial airport. It mostly serves charter and sightseeing flights. At a remarkable 1,240 feet below mean sea level, it's the lowest airport on Earth. Clearly, though, it's a very small airfield. There's a much bigger airport in Kazakhstan called Atro. It's 72 feet below sea level, but it's big enough to hold large airplanes, making it the lowest commercial airport in the world. Dead Sea. The surface and shores of the Dead Sea are 1,000 412 feet below sea level, making it the single lowest lying land on the planet. Its name is derived from the fact that no fish or aquatic plants can be found in the Dead Sea. Still, its moniker is a bit misleading. Life does exist in the form of unseen bacteria and microbial fungi. The sea itself is 997 feet deep and is comprised of 34% salt, making it nearly 10 times saltier than the ocean and one of the world's saltiest bodies of water. But it's not nearly as salty as leaders in Jordan are about having to deal with the fact that this body of water is receding at a staggering clip. From 1930 to 1980, the water level of the Dead Sea dropped by 10 meters. Now it drops one meter every year. The Jordanians announced in late 2009 that they were planning to extract some 11 billion cubic feet of water annually from the Red Sea. The waste water from this source will be diverted to the Dead Sea by tunnel. The first phase of this ambitious, controversial plan is set for now to begin early next year and be complete by 2021. The Caspian Sea. That airport we mentioned before, Atrau, dots the north end of the Caspian Sea. Its seabed reaches as low as 1,023 meters below sea level, making it the second lowest lying natural depression. It's also Earth's largest inland body of water. Now, I do not know that personally. However, that is what the research has told us. I'm just a guy working in the wildlife, so what do I know? At any rate, hey, the word Caspian, if you wanted to know, that is derived from the Caspian ancient tribe who lived southwest of the sea. Bet you did not know that, now did you? Well, now you do. Its geographic location at the meeting point of Asia and Europe, as well as its abundant amount of resources like oil and natural gas, have made the Caspian Sea very important to humans. As a result, it's unfortunately become a point of contention between cultures with different ideologies. People always mess good things up. That's why we stick to Nitro around here. Its Google stats are strong, though. 225 reviews and 4.2 stars as of September 14. Now, why are there Google reviews of the Caspian Sea? If you were going to visit the Caspian Sea, could the Google review be some sort of deciding factor on whether or not you go through with the trip? Well, please let us know in the comments section because this is fascinating stuff for me personally, and I will shout out your answers on a video soon. Baku. Renowned Russian painter Alexei Bagolyubov captured the shoreline of a next place below sea level all the way back in 1861. And it's a good thing, because at the time, it was the only method of visually preserving a site. It's also a really good painting. Baku has grown a lot in the 156 years since Bagolyubov was there. Today, it's the capital of its country, Azerbaijan, and home to over 2 million people. At 28 meters below sea level, 
This makes Baku both the largest city and the lowest lying national capital in the world. The Katara Depression, comparable in size to Lake Ontario's Katara Depression, is in the shape of a teardrop that gets as low as 436 feet below sea level, making it the second lowest point in Africa. The region is mostly barren and outside of wild acacia there is no vegetation to speak of. Cheetah run wild in the habitat as well as gazelles, an important and ever elusive food source for the fast felines. Humans could not be denied a permanent existence in the depression, such as evidenced by Kora Village, the only permanent population in the region. Some 350 or so Berbers occupied this oasis at last count. Lake Asal. Lake Asal got 4.4 stars but only 12 reviews on Google in case you were wondering. That's slightly better than the Caspian Sea, a fifth of a star to be exact. Lake Asal is also the lowest lying land in Africa. Only a few places lie lower like the aforementioned Dead Sea. The two bodies have a comparable level of salinity with Lake Asal exceeding the Dead Sea by a dash. Chot Melra. Sometime between the Miocene and early Pleistocene periods, several million years ago, the grand majestic Atlas Mountains formed. Accompanying this epic movement of Earth came the formation of Chot Melra, both the largest lake and lowest lying point in Algeria. 130 feet below the sea surface, Chot Melra spans some 80 miles from east to west, though its size varies depending on the season. In the summer, the lake dries out, turning into a salt pan. Vegetation here, which is comprised of 72 species, have adapted to the high amounts of salt, while the water is host to just a few animals like brine shrimp. The lowest point in North America lies within one of its most inhospitable and infamous land masses. Death Valley. One of the hottest places in the world, Death Valley takes up 3,000 square miles on the eastern side of California. That lowest point that we talked about can be found within the Bad Water Basin and is recorded as being 282 feet below sea level. The highest point in the United States, Mount Whitney, lies just 85 miles away from the Bad Water Basin. Though the temperature is contested, Death Valley's Furnace Creek was the site of the highest recorded air temperature of all time at 134 degrees Fahrenheit on July 10, 1913. Little more than two inches of rain fall in the sprawling desert annually. Little vegetation can be found, but still Death Valley, as those who have been through it may attest to, it's still a beautiful place. Tyeri Plain. Lying just north of the Dunedin International Airport is New Zealand's lowest point, two meters below sea level. It's all part of the Tairi Plain, a 300 square kilometer patch of farmland. The town is dominated by farm animals and lovely towns nearby. Floods in the region happen regularly and can be severe. Lame Fjord. This agricultural land in Denmark used to be a body of water, but a draining project started in 1873, and it took a really long time to complete. It wasn't until 1943 that the lowest lying elevations were pumped dry. Now, the land is ideal for growing things like carrots and potatoes. At seven meters below sea level, it is, along with a polder in the Western Netherlands, one of the lowest lying points in all of Western Europe. Georgetown. The busiest place in Guyana, Georgetown, is also the country's capital, and is where some 120,000 people call home. Normally, it lies right at sea level, zero, but at high tide, it's actually one meter below sea level. It's for this reason that the land is protected by a seawall, and authorities decided to install an intricate network of canals to drain the city. Georgetown is hot and humid. There's no dry season, however, with all 12 months experiencing at least two average inches of precipitation. 
New Orleans. Until the Louisiana Purchase in 1803, Napoleon and the French owned New Orleans. The city was named after a French regent in 1718. After the U.S. purchased the land, New Orleans would become a melting pot of cultures, with American, French, Creole, and African people creating a diverse mix of lifestyles. It's why the city is such a unique, fun place to experience. Parts of the city lie a few meters below sea level. By the late 20th century, city officials began to realize that New Orleans could be vulnerable to flooding. Events like Hurricane Betsy in 1965 and a flood in May of 1995 demonstrated as much. The first mandatory evacuation in the city's history occurred in the same year and was in lieu of Hurricane Katrina. While most residents had left by the time Katrina hit land, more than 1,500 people were lost during that disaster. During the hurricane, the city's federal flood protection system failed. 80% of the city would flood as a result. The event is one of the worst civil engineering disasters of all time, and many say the worst since Chernobyl in 1986. Lake Eyre. It doesn't often fill, but when it does, Lake Eyre in Central Australia becomes the largest lake in the country. Even when it's not full, it's home to the country's lowest point at 49 feet below sea level. The salinity of the lake, which is at ocean levels when full, increases as water evaporates. Saturation occurs, and at this point, the lake turns pink. Now there's just one more place left to learn about. But first, we'd like to thank everyone for watching. We do hope you learned something interesting in the last nine minutes or so, and we invite you to subscribe and tune in to our next video. Now, for one more place, and it's a city that is constantly having to hold water at bay. Kristianstad, Sweden's lowest point, nearly two and a half meters below sea level, can be found in this city. It's why parts have systems of levees and pumps in place for flood protection. In the recent past, they've gone to great lengths to protect the environment. They use no oil, coal, or natural gas to warm buildings, a remarkable turnaround considering that just two decades ago, all of the heating came from fossil fuels. 